name is Adam Yurden. I'm a design engineer with Great Coasters International. And are you a big Aero fan? I'm a huge Aero fan. Aero is one of those companies that really inspired me to do what I do, to want to design roller coasters. So they, just the aesthetics of the rides themselves really inspired me. I said, hey, I want to do that. This is a real thing. Let's go do that. What about Aero Rides inspired you so much? It's the beauty of the rides themselves. It's the dominance over the skyline. It's really, it's, it's really the ballet of, of how the train interacts with the steel, the whole layout of the ride itself. It's, it's, it's hard to explain. What, uh, why are, since you're in the industry, which gives you the carte blanche to say pretty much stuff about the industry, why are error rides, why were error rides so popular with parks? Error rides were really a staple at, at amusement parks because they were economical and they had a wide catalog that they offered. So basically, you could build an entire amusement park from what Arrow offered. You could go to one company, it made ordering easier, it made buying easier. You just sit there and say, hey, page 23, I want one of these. And, and that's, that's really what, what it was, is they were the most economical solution for a steel roller coaster at the time, a big steel roller coaster at the time. Why were they so economical? It was mostly due to their design. It was a very simple design. They went with a simpler support structure. The track itself was minimally, minimally fabricated in terms of a constant radius circle or a straight tangent. There wasn't a whole lot of bending or rolling of steel that you would need to do. It just kept things simple. That way they could do a whole bunch of them at one time. And really in, in terms of making a cookie cutter ride. You know, this ride, this loop could work on this ride, it could work on this ride, it could work on this ride. It didn't have to be a custom design, more or less a patchwork of pre-designed pieces, really. What makes this ride special? This ride was special because it was custom fabricated for this spot of land. They used a very typical drop that they might have found on one of their other mega loopers. But what really set it apart was the second drop. The second drop dropped over 200 feet down into a ravine, turned the corner, then went up and did typical arrow loops, corkscrews, maneuvers. So this one really was the biggest and best of the time. And that's what set this apart. Air rides started falling out of favor in the early 90s. And it was more or less at the time they were designing with a basic radius tangent radius approach. It was so they could turn over rides very quickly. They were doing everything on paper. So mathematically speaking, they were very simple, ge geometrically speaking, excuse me. Geometrically speaking, they were very simple. At the time, B&M came on the market. B&M was using computer designs. And really, everyone looked at them and said, wow, these rides can be a lot smoother than what they are. And Aero had such a demand for building that I think they kind of forgot, hey, we need to keep innovating with design. Not only do we need to stay on top of our game with, with new ideas, but we really need to keep up with the man on, on, on actual design and function. Rewritability. These rides are, are starting to kind of be removed from parks because of the simple geometry. It's starting to wear more on the track, wear more on the trains, because there, there's more abuse being put into chassis, wheel assemblies, the track themselves. The track behind me here was a very simple structure. It was, it was welded up in multiple ways, which meant maintenance in the off season just became incredibly tedious because they were having to look at every single weld, fix welds, replace sections, versus more modern technology where it was actually a plasma cut piece of steel they were using for a cross tie, welded to the track itself versus welded to all these smaller assemblies. And that, that ultimately is what led to these rides going away, is, is they're starting to wear out. Why is uh, this ride that was unique in that while the Arrow already built it to begin with, Morgan, which was really a successor to Arrow, came in and revamped it, right? Absolutely. This ride started out as an aerodynamics product. The actual same designer that designed this later went on to Morgan. 
And I think that kind of put Morgan in the door to come back and fix some of the, the design issues that the ride had in the past, or some of the maintenance issues that they were having. And it allowed them to have a smoother ride, smoother product, and again, a more reliable product. This was something that it needed to last. It, it needed to last more than just 10 years. So they came in, redid the entire track, except for the lift hill and the brake run, and that that's given this ride in a brand new life. You know, it's much smoother than it was originally. I mean, they had they did have to sacrifice the loops in order to do so, but I think they've built a fantastic product. Talk a little bit about how Aero worked on and perfected tubular steel, but we're starting to see flat steel back in the steel coaster. Uh, you guys have worked in flat steel your whole life in the sky. Talk about how, what you think of flat steel in general as a viable steel product. Well, I mostly work with wooden roller coasters, which uses a flat wearing surface for the top laminate. And that's purely just so we don't wear out the lumber. So the steel itself isn't really structural. Aero recognized that when they built the Matterhorn. They said, we cannot make a tight radius curve in order to do what Walt wants us to do. So they looked into multiple options, square steel, and eventually landed upon tubular steel because it's something that's very easy to bend or easy to roll. And it's easy to work with. It's also very cheap to get. So they started using the tubular steel, which from the 50s on really took off. At a point where, out of necessity, we need to blend tubular steel or a steel product with a wooden roller coaster. I think it was the birth out of necessity is why we started seeing square rails again. It isn't so much that tubular steel is, is bad, it's just out of, purely out of design function. You work in wood. Uh, but you still love steel coasters. Talk about how these designs are still inspiring the wooden generation of today and tomorrow. Absolutely. Steel coasters, Arrow especially, played a huge influence on my life. It was the aesthetics, the beauty that I, I that really drove me into the industry. I said I want to do that. And I grew up at Worlds of Fun with the Orient Express, which is an aero, aero ride. It may not have been the smoothest, but it was functional. It was a lot of fun. And it was so much fun that it eventually wore itself out and, and had to be removed. But it, it's rides like this that, yes, they're going away, but they still inspire us because, aesthetically speaking, great coasters always strives to have a very aesthetically pleasing ride and at the same time a very fun ride. And I think that's what Aero was really pushing for. And I think well, a lot of manufacturers do for, for that matter, but it, it plays a huge part in, in the overall design, inspired by, oh, let's have this thing look amazing and ride a completely unreal experience.